So it was was really looking for something that could help me differentiate myself. I spent a long time researching coaches and programs and Oh you did. Yeah. Yeah. I eventually just looking at testimonials and looking at the different programs and what they offered landed on the intentional product manager IJS program uh, as as the way to go. I had done some applying and then getting a form email weeks weeks later with no explanation as to why. There are a lot of coaches who I'm sure do well, but when I looked at what their offerings were, it was it never felt like it was the full package. I landed this great role that I'm really excited about. I I tell people that that the IJ, the intentional job search program, Miyagi'd me um, in a way. When I restarted, I think I only applied to five places, got through to final interviews at three. And at this point, I was down to two. Now here I am, a great offer, 40 something percent increase in compensation versus where I was two weeks ago. Hey everyone, today we'll have a special guest, Justin Swain, who just finished our intentional job search program, graduated with some awesome results. So I'm happy to have him uh, in today's video. Hey Justin, welcome to today's session. Hey Shabit, glad to be here. A great, great thing you again. And I'm sure like everybody who's watching, they'll have a fun time listening to you. So why, why don't you begin? Just tell us, uh, tell them a bit about yourself. And, you know, if you could like, Tell them about a little bit of your career his, history and what brought you to the Intentional Job Search program. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I uh, have been in the software industry for about 15, 16 years. I actually started in sales and marketing before product management, but had a, had a CTO that said, hey, I, I think you do really well with customers and you know their needs really well. And he convinced me to give product management a try and really just loved it. Um, it, it bridged it bridged that world of customer communication and identifying customer problems with being able to be a real part of the solution. So the company that I started in product management at, I was there for seven years and really enjoyed it. Um, and then actually that CTO that inspired me to be a product manager moved to another company and a couple of years later said, hey, I've got a role that I think you good in. So I uh, moved there and you know, started as a product manager, uh, moved up to senior product manager, and eventually became a group product manager over a span of uh, of a ten years, and and really loved it. But eventually reached a point where, you know, I wanted to take that next step in my career growth, and also move to a different company for some various reasons there. So when I started to look at making a change, the timing was tough. Right, two or three years ago, right after COVID, right, it was that super easy to get a job. Yeah. I mean, and I had, at that time, I had people reaching out to me every day, but I was happy with where I was. So yeah, it just, job market was getting difficult, very competitive for product managers, especially. And it really shifted from an employee to kind of an employer's uh, market that from that perspective. So it was, was really looking for something that could help me differentiate myself uh, and looked I, I have no idea how long uh, in aggregate it was, but I spent a long time researching coaches and programs. And oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Eventually, just looking at testimonials and looking at the different programs and what they offered landed on the intentional product manager IJS program uh, as as the way to go. And uh, I'm curious. So you know, you mentioned you picked uh, intentional product manager, but before that, had you already started applying, looking for jobs? Yeah, I had I had done some applying and you know had a couple interviews that went pretty well. One that was really close, but they had a candidate that was a little ahead of me. They ended up moving forward with. Otherwise, it was just applications getting you know into the abyss and getting a form email weeks weeks later with no explanation as to why. Uh, even though I felt like I in some cases matched the job description really well and had. Mm. The, the the necessary qualities. Uh, talk to me more, like going back to that state. Like the things that prompted you to go find a program was lack of feedback, not knowing why you were either second in that in that one instance or why you weren't heading back. Were there other things as well you were looking to solve? Well, that was a big part of it. In addition, as I started to really think about it, you know, I I worked at that 
first company for seven years and then was recruited by the CTO uh, where I worked again for four years. So really I hadn't had to do, or I, I hadn't, I hadn't done a true job search for over a decade. And it, and so at that point I thought, you know, what may have looked good on LinkedIn and resume 10 or 11 years ago is probably pretty different. And it, it's going to take me a long time to figure out on my own, like what recruiters and hiring managers are looking for now versus what they were that long ago. So I think that was another big motivator was refreshing my brand and how I present myself. I'm curious what convinced you to go with intentional job search and like what pushed you over the edge, you know, like, cause you can always keep looking on your own. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, again, it, I think it, just the the month or two I spent applying is what pushed me over the edge in general to say, okay, I need a program or a coach. But really with IJS, it was just the structure with intentional product manager. You know, there are a lot of coaches who I'm sure do well, but when I looked at what their offerings were, it was, it never felt like it was the full package. It was bits and pieces like, hey, I'll help you with resume writing or then you can add this on and, you know, we'll help you with coaching. And eventually uh, I just, you know, kept going back to IJS. And when I heard about how the referral network functions, everything made sense, right? Because to me, intentional product manager was just as invested in me as uh, I felt like they would be as I would be in the program. Because what I recognize is that you know, intentional product manager wants me to be part of that network. And so my success becomes, you know, IPM success. That That is so spot on. It's it's like, I, I think we're seeing like our net, a lot of people join at this point, but a lot of that is driven by success of people such as you who graduate, who are able to refer people to into the program and then to their companies. And so it's just like builds on on each other so really yeah. articulated there justin okay so now you you make the decision you join the program i'm curious like I, I i'm gonna ask you about your experience but just like in the first few weeks were there any things that surprised you or were like or were like weird in any way no honestly i don't think there was anything weird or that surprised me per se it was just everything in those first few weeks reaffirmed my decision right because it's it's an investment. It's a big investment. And there's always a little bit of, you know, nerves, a little bit of second guessing when you when you make any kind of investment like that. And so it was really great in that first week or two because uh, I loved everything. Again, when I go back and mention that whole package, everything in those first two weeks just added to that, right? The mindset, that wasn't really even something I knew about when I signed onto the program. But I think that's huge that the mindset concept of it, the way that the program is structured. Um, I loved how it's all laid out, how there's so many um, opportunities for group coaching, for individual coaching. It just all made sense and really to me reaffirmed like this was the right decision, even though I was only a couple of weeks in at that point. Cool. Yeah, and, and totally agree about mindset because I, I think that's like probably 75% of the game. And it's also something that nobody wants per se. You know, if nobody comes in to ask me like, cool, I want a better mindset. They might say I want more confidence. And like, that is what it is. Right. It, it drives. So love that, that mindset aspect you mentioned. Okay. Then, then tell us now you're going through the program. Like what for you were some of the top moments, things that really benefited you in, in your search? So I loved the story writing. It, it's funny because when I have people ask me about the program as a whole, and looking back, you know, especially now that um, I landed this great role that I'm really excited about, I I tell people that, that the IJ, the intentional job search program, miyagi me um, in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, because you're, you're doing all these things and it's like, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, I understand why we're doing this. Now I understand why I'm doing that. But, and then there was this moment actually in one of the interviews with the company that I'm at now where they're peppering me with questions and I'm just answering them. And I just knew how to answer them right away with no hesitation. And after the call, I sat there and I just thought, oh my gosh, I was able to do that because of everything this program walked me through, right? All the stories, restructuring them, you know, learning the H-Star system. 
identifying who it is that I'm interviewing with and what they are looking for. And then being able to, even if it wasn't one of those behavioral questions I prepped for, you eventually get to the point where it doesn't really matter. Cause I know my stories now well enough that in two or three seconds, I can say, yeah, sure. Let me tell you about a time. And I can just remember it from those five stories. Yeah. So don't be surprised if you start hearing from students that who blame you, that I start using this, I borrowed this thing from you, the Karate Kid may accept that it's right. Like it's, you know, wax on, wax off. Yeah. So, uh, there's a lot of like almost resistance from folks who are like, cool, I don't want to write the stories. Like, why don't you finish my resume first? But like, this is the foundation that builds on, like everything builds on your interview answers and everything. Uh, but I love the analogy. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's interesting. There's, there's a reason that there's a reason that you're selective and that, you know, you know, I feel like if, if IJS or, you know, the, the intentional product manager was just looking to just grab everybody and take everybody's money, right? You'd accept anyone who's willing to pay, but that's not the case. And that, to me, the reason is now looking back is you need people who are ready in this program, who have the skills necessary to accomplish what they're looking for. And at the end of the day, right, all those stories it's not made up it's it's my experience yeah it's just the the ijs program helped me learn how to like dig deeper into my experience how to explain it in a good way and how to frame it so that it quickly answers questions and gives those interviewers what they're looking for without you know again not making things up i'm not sugarcoating stuff i'm just presenting myself in a different way that i wouldn't have necessarily known how to do before no, and also thank you for that clarification uh, for a for lot of folks because sometimes people interpret stories as, oh yeah, just come up with a story. What would a product manager have done here? Yeah. It's, no, it's like what you actually did, but told the right way. You know, it's much more, it's sort of not so coming up with the story, but like scripting it the right way such that the right. interviewer goes like, wow, you know, you're not telling them everything. Okay. Thank you for, for sharing that. that. That's awesome. So so tell us uh, about your big win. Where did you end up? What made you like select that particular role? We would just love to hear that aspect. Of yeah, um, and this is really interesting too because this was driven by some of, a, a portion of one of the modules, I guess. So I'm going through at this point and, and I know everybody's journey is going to be a little bit different, but the truth is, I, I so I paused applying for a little while when I started the program. I thought, you know what, I want to get, want to get some things together. I want to get my LinkedIn, get some of my stories down. When I restarted, I think I only applied to five places, got through to final interviews at three, and at this point, I was down to two. So there was one where they went with another candidate. Uh, which was fine actually i didn't think i'd even get to the final offer stage on that one because or the final interview but i did because there was a big skill set i was missing but they liked my interviews enough they kept moving forward so at this point i was down to two that i was really far into and there was one that i i almost i pretty well had my mind set on it, you know i just thought this is the company they're fantastic everything they do they seem awesome and that the other one was more of a they reached out to me they're interesting, you know, I definitely want to pursue it, but um, I'm not as excited about it as the one. And around that time, I was on the module with like how to, how to make the final decision. And I, I heard Sam's voice ringing in my head, right? Talking about the things that I need to be looking for. And, you know, he mentions in the, core, in, in the module about company culture is important, you know, vision is important. But what's really most important is who you are working with on a daily basis and especially who you're reporting to because those are going to be the ones that affect your life have, you know the most and as i went through the interviews with this other company that was kind of my second choice it was like wow i love everybody that i'm talking to i get along with them super well they seem to really love the company and and it was just interesting how all of a sudden, some of the things that mattered to me before didn't matter anymore. And so this company um, is Henry Shine One. Uh, they're in the medical and dental software solutions industry. And uh, yeah, by the time I got to the final stages with both of them, I had flipped and thought, you know what, this is the one. Like, if they make me an offer, this is the one I want. And so they made me a, they were, they, and they seemed really excited about me. 
And that was one of the other things, you know, yeah. I want to, I want to be wanted, I guess, for, for a lack of a better way to put it. And everybody I talked to, the recruiter told me, she's like, I've, I've never had feedback like this. You know, there was one individual in particular who was a pretty senior director of engineering. And she's like, that the recruiter said, I need to thank you because he's been a little, I guess, hard on me. And it's been tough for me to kind of gain his trust. And he messaged me and said, you better hire him. And so that was really cool to feel like, hey, they really want me. And then from there, I used, you know, I, I worked, I, I pulled the offer. I did exactly what, uh, you know, IJS said to do. I worked with you directly with Sam on how to make sure I countered and got a got a pretty good increase, um, upped the signing bonus, upped the annual bonuses, upped my base, uh, and was able to to really um, ramp up that offer. And yeah, now here I am, a great offer, uh, 40, I forget the exact number now, 40 something percent increase in compensation versus where I was two weeks ago. I'm glad you're saying that because like sometimes people are like, no, that just doesn't happen. Next, from one job to the other, you get a 10% increase. That's a standard. Most people are super happy with that. And that's just, we don't want you to get a job. We want you to get the job. But, uh, but I think your biggest win is, I mean, you're going to spend so much time at work that people who you like to work with, the right environment is just like your life changes. So I'm, I'm so happy for you, Justin. And six months ago, I wouldn't, that would have not been, six months ago, I would have been thinking about increase, compensation yeah. increase, compensation increase. But like I mentioned, I, for a few years, I really enjoyed where I was working, but you know, environmental factors, company situations started putting a lot of pressure on a lot of people and it was getting really hard for me. And, and, and going through the IJS program and being in that situation there really drove that home with me that, you know what, don't worry about the money. Like, if you do it right, the money will come. Find find the place that you fit at, where you like what they're doing, where you're excited about it, where you like the people. So that's really what I did. And I wasn't focused on the compensation. And like, like you said, it just, it came, you know, it came. They wanted me and they were like, we're going to figure out how to get you. And so I, I, I didn't focus on the money, but yeah, it, um, it really became a big increase. I mean, I, I love those victories, like like your victory, where they either create the role for you or they like change it in a substantial way because you're just so awesome. They're like, cool, you know, we want you, we'll figure it out. And, and yeah. that's exactly what happened in your situation. Cool. So last couple of questions. Now one, sure. like when you think of like, you know, you mentioned we don't accept everyone. Who do you think this program is a good fit for and who should maybe not uh, consider it. Yeah, and one thing I'll point out is I, I love how the intentional job search approaches it from a spectrum, right? You know, I am, I feel like it's here. You know, I am I was kind of in here, a group product manager, but I also saw VPs and chief product officers in the program. But then I also love how it's, hey, if you're a, you know, if you're entry level, if you're just looking to get into product management, and I know that it's probably a little bit different, like it's tailored. So to me, the first thing is don't worry if you're looking at the program, don't worry too much about your experience um, because the program will adjust to what your experience is. The biggest thing is if you are looking for someone to come in and walk you through it and rewrite your resume and tell you what to say and get you some interviews, don't do this program. You know, yeah, because it, it requires work. But the thing is, this program has taught me, I, I mean, I'm a hundred percent more confident in the future. I don't care at this point, right? I have no plans to change again if this is a great fit for me till I retire, right? But my confidence is su significantly increased moving forward if I ever feel like I do need to make a change. So, you know, it's you've got to be willing to put in the work, knowing though that. This wasn't just me on my own. Like there was someone with me there the entire way. My wife loved when I told her about Ricky, how there's, she's like, they have basically a therapist on staff. I said, yeah. And I could just reach out to her anytime and she'll say, schedule 30 minutes, let's talk. You know, cause there were a couple of times where I did have some struggles from a mindset standpoint. And so, you know, there's, there was you, there was Ricky, there was um, Sam, 
and all of the coaches that uh, that walk you through. So it's got to be someone willing to put in the work. And also, I would say the other really big thing is you have to be humble because you're going to get told where you are. There's there's a lot of radical candor right in this program because that's the only way that you're going to get better. So you're going to have a mock interviewer that's going to say that wasn't good. Let's go back. Let me give you feedback and try it again. Right. But, you know, I had I had times where I had some people that were a little bit more tough and I'd adjust based on what they said. And then on the next one, I got a higher or a strong higher. Right. And they'd say, perfect. That was great. Right. So, yeah, you got to you got to be humble. You got to be willing to work hard and just follow the program. Exactly. Like we call it being coachable uh, because if you're not here to learn, like, you know, really, w w what are you here for? And I mean, I am shocked. Like, people make all sorts of assumptions from, like, early career product managers to CPOs. Everyone can go to that next level. And, like, the really people, like, you you made really fast progress. And I think it was because you were open to learning. You were like, cool, you know, I'll give you feedback. I'll apply it. And, and you took it and then you applied it and, and, and then you did really well because of that. So kudos to you to, to being coach. Yeah. Yeah. And I think advice to, to that point, looking back is be, be prepared to put in the work, but don't put pressure on yourself. I made that mistake T to your point. I, I was pretty lucky. I, I, I put in the work and I, I was three months in the program when I got this offer, which, um, I think is, is a little, especially in this job climate, I was pretty happy with that, but. I jumped in in that first two or three weeks and was just going strong and then kind of had this like crash and burn moment. And I remember talking to you and you're like, you know, where is the pressure coming from? And it was like, as we talked about, it, I'm like, it's coming from me, you know, no one in IJS is putting pressure on me. It, it was just, I had this mindset that, man, I'm going to jump into this. I'm going to do it three times as fast. And, and that was the wrong way to look at it. It was, Hey, just. You know what i should be doing is just putting in the work setting aside the time and doing it the right way and let you know just let it happen uh, because that's that's the way it needs to go so there's there's no one that put pressure on me to hurry and move and it's all about it was all about my pace and you know when there was a week or two there where i'm like you know what i'm slammed this week it was like no worries don't schedule anything awesome Justin, any last things you would like to say before we, we wrap up? Really, I would just encourage, I, 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 I really mean this. I don't know where I would be right now without the program. No idea. I don't know. Maybe I would have landed a job, but I could still be sitting there submitting applications with no response, no feedback. I mean, that was the biggest thing, right? Is you just don't get feedback. So there's no way for me to know how to improve. So, you know, anyone like those things I mentioned, I, I like your word. If, if you're coachable and you're willing to put in the work and understand that this program is going to be work, but it will, you know, it, it, it will take you, if, if you have this giant pool of candidates, it's going to take you from down here and it's going to put you up here yeah. is what the program will do. It, it will get you noticed. It will help you know how to answer questions. And I think a lot of these principles can be applied outside of a job search, right? Uh, especially for product managers, um, you know, you'll learn, I, I've learned things that I can now apply in this job, how to present in, in, in you know, appropriate ways. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I think it's a fantastic program. And I think, I, I think it will surprise anyone who takes it, like how well it benefits them. It's funny because one of the things that I was most excited about was the referral network. And I still think it's fantastic. The irony is, I didn't need it. I had a V because I redid my, my LinkedIn profile, you know, with, with Sam and Parveen and their help and, and your help. And because I learned how to, how to do some of those initial interviews and really present myself. Well, the VP of product for Henry shine one reached out to me. So I, you know, I was super excited about the referral network and actually didn't end up needing to use it. Although I know there's plenty of people that land, land their roles through it. Thank you. I mean, clearly you have put in the work, you deserve this amazing outcome and, and you got it. You've been a pleasure to, to work with and I'm sure people are going to learn a lot from, from your experience. So thank you for doing the video. Yeah, absolutely. And appreciate your help, Shabit. Again, it's 
it's, it's great to have that, you know, hands-on experience from you and Sam and, and, and Ricky and, and everybody that, that was a part of this for me. Absolutely. Thanks again.